All right, welcome back. So today we're going to learn about relations, domain, range, and function. Now, two of these words you've already learned, domain and range. The other one you may not know is relation. And so far, this whole unit where we're graphing ordered pairs and lines, those are all relations. So if you read the direction up here at the top where it says um, any set of ordered pairs is called a relation. A relation can be expressed as, and there's four different ways we can express relation. We can express relation in a table of values, right? So we've been doing that, right? If I have an X, Y chart, and then I've got a bunch of ordered pairs in here, like 3, 4, 0, 8, negative 3, 2, right? That is basically considered a relation. We could list it in a list of points, like ordered pairs, right? So it could be like 3, 4... 0, 8, negative 3, 2. And oftentimes this relation will be put into set notation, right? So it's a list of ordered pairs. A relation can be expressed on a graph, right? So you have the y-axis and the x-axis. And you could have anything that's graphed. You could have a graph that has a bunch of points on it. And those points could create a line, but they don't have to. It could be something that creates a curve of some sort. So a curve that would be considered a relation. So basically anything that you can get ordered pairs from. And then the other way is we can write an equation. And the most common equation that we've been using so far is like y equals mx plus b. So we could say like y equals 2x plus 3. This equation is considered a relation. It could be anything. It could be like 2y minus x equals 5. That is a relation because you can get ordered pairs from it. So you might hear us refer to the word relation. Whenever you hear the word relation, we're just talking about ordered pairs, basically. So then whenever you are dealing with ordered pairs, you have the domain and the range. And the domain of a relation is called the input value or the x values. And this should be review. The range of a relation is equipped with all the output values or the y values. So now, quick reminder, there are three things that you have to follow, three rules you have to follow whenever you are listing the domain and range of a relation. If you think that you remember what they are, go ahead and jot, jot them down. But the first one is put them in order. Put the numbers in order. And I prefer to put them in order from least to greatest, but it doesn't matter. It can be from greatest to least. The other thing is don't repeat numbers. And it doesn't matter what order you put these rules in. So if you'd already written them down. And then the last one is use set notation. Now I'm going to add to this rule because we're going to go into a little bit more advanced discussion of domain and range. And there's a little, an extra added notation in set notation that you might run across. So you're going to use set notation with the such that notation. And I'm going to put such that in quotation marks. And I'm going to explain what that is when we start listing our domain and range down at the bottom. But basically set notation, reminder, is being able to put things in brackets. Now such that would be if we're talking about domain, domain is x, so in the set notation before I even start writing what the domain is, I'm going to write x such that, and the such that is this line that's straight up and down. That right there means such that. Now if I were talking about the, dom the range, then I would start it with y such that, and then what follows after that is whatever the domain and whatever the range are. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the tables down below. Okay, so now if you look at the first table right here, if I ask you for the domain and the range, well the domain is just asking you to list all of the x values and the range is just asking you to list all of the y values. And normally we would just put in set notation, negative 3, 1, and 4. Notice I didn't repeat the negative 3, I didn't repeat the 1s, and I just listed them once. But then, if you look, I've added this little 
x such that x equals. So you start now, when we're writing domain, we're going to start set notation and we're going to start with x such that. And then we write down what x is equal to. We did the same thing with the y. So the y are these numbers here. Notice I put them in order from least to greatest. And I started off with y such that y equals. And you should practice saying it when you're writing it so that you can remember that that line means such that. So if I'm going to do number two, I'm going to start with the domain by starting with my squiggly line bracket. I'm going to write x such that, and then I'm going to say x equals, and I'm going to write negative 1, 0, 1, 4, and 5. And then I'm going to close my little squiggly line brackets. For the range, if you notice, the range now, since range is y, we're going to start with y such that. And then we're going to write, okay, well, y equals basically the same thing as x, negative 1, 0, 1, 4, 5, and then we're going to close our set notation brackets. Now stop the video and practice the such that in writing the domain and range of 3, 4, and 5. Then chime in to make sure that you did it correctly. All right, so now hopefully when you were practicing writing this, you were saying into your head, x such that x equals, and then saying it, and then range y such that y equals. Notice here, when I listed the range, I only listed the three once. Go ahead and take a look at my answers. Make sure that they match your answers as well. So now let's talk about the word function. If you read what it says down here, it says some relations have a special classification. Some are called functions, and some are not. Now, a function is a relation for which any input value has exactly one output value. So let me read that again. A function is a relation, so a function is something that has ordered pairs for which any input, remember input is our x, has exactly one output. Remember output is our y. Okay. So. To determine if relations are functions, we're going to ask ourselves this question. How many outputs does this input have? If your answer is ever anything except for one, then it is not a function. So for example, if I look at this first one, so you're looking at the relation from above. This is number one. If I look at my inputs, I could say, okay, this input is negative three. How many outputs does negative three have? Oh, well, negative three is paired up with a two and negative 3 is paired up with a negative 4. So this input of negative 3 has two different outputs. Same here. This 1 has two different outputs. So because these input values have two different output, value, out, output values, then this one is not a function. And so that's what we're going to write on the line here. Not a function. All right, so now let's look at x up here. So if I look at x here, all of these inputs, 1 has one output, 4 has one output, 5 have one output, 0 has one output, negative 1 has one output. All of these inputs have exactly one output, which means this one is a function. So on line 2, I'm going to write number 2 is a function. Okay? Now, we only care about what the input is doing, right? We don't really care what the output doing is doing. So every input has exactly one output. So now let's take a look at the next one. The next one, 0 has one output value. It's 3. 5 has one output value. It's 3. 2 has one output value. It's 3. Same with this one. All of the output values are 3, but it doesn't matter because every single input value is unique and every single input value has exactly one output. So this one is also a function. All right, number four. So let's look at this. I have an input starting here, negative five. Negative five has one output value here, but if you look down here, this negative five has an output value right here. So negative five actually has two different output values. So since negative five, has two different output values, then this one is not a function. All right, I'm going to come up with another way of explaining this as well. If you're still a little bit confused, stick with me. 
number five. Number five, look at all of my inputs. I have a negative two paired up with this negative one. I have a six paired up with a 10, a nine paired up with a negative three, a negative two. Oh, negative two repeated itself. But if you look at this, this negative two has the same output value. So negative two is only with negative one, okay? So now, this one is considered a function. All right, so now, here's my little story. These tables here are all called relations. I'm going to say that these relations, the x's and the y's, are in a relationship. And x cannot cheat on y. However, y can do whatever the heck they want. So really, when you're deciding if something is a function or not a function, you are checking up on x, and you are looking at all the x values, and you're asking yourself, does x repeat? And if x repeats, then you look to see that it has two different output values. If it has two different output values, then this guy is a cheater, which means it's not in a functional relationship. So here, negative 3 and 1 are both cheaters, not in a functional relationship. Over here, you have 1, 4, 5, 0, negative 1. None of the x values repeated, functional relationship. Same here, you look at the x values, none of these x values repeat, function. Over here, these x values, you have a negative five twice, and these negative fives are going out on two, two different dates, one with the y negative five and one with the two negative five. Negative five is a cheater, can't be a function, so this one's not a function. This one, it appears at first glance that negative two is a cheater, but negative two went out with negative one, and oh, negative two went out with negative one again. So negative one got a second date. If it's the same ordered pair, then it's considered a function. But if x repeats with two different y values, it's not a function. So sometimes relationships are shown in other ways besides a table. And so if you look here, this first one is just a list, right? So if I'm asking for the domain and range, well, I'm going to start, instead of this time writing d equals, I'm just going to start with the domain by writing x such that. And then I'm going to write x equals. And so the domain is all of the x values. So these are the x values. And so... I'm going to start with the lowest one, which is 0, so I'm going to do 0, 2, 3, and 5. Alright, now you stop the video and go ahead and try writing the range and then answer, is this a function? Alright, and so the domain is the x values, so the range is the y values, so these are all the numbers that are my range those y values. And if you look when I ask, is this a function, you're just looking at the x values. I have a 2, a 5, a 0, and a 3. None of them repeated, so yes, it is a function. So now the next one, this next thing right here is called a mapping. So input is all of our domain values and output is all of our y values. And so over here when I say list the ordered pairs represented by this relation, well the ordered pairs, you just follow the arrows. So the first ordered pair is 5, 3, the second one is 3, 1, and the other one is 3, 4. So go ahead and write those ordered pairs in there and then find the domain and range and decide is this a function. So I'm going to stop the video and you try this one on your own. Okay, so take a look at the answer here. Notice I wrote down the ordered pairs in that box. My uh, domain, make sure you start as x such that. Here's my domain, my range, y such that. Here's my range. And the answer to is this a function, the answer is no. And the reason that it's no is because 3 is our cheater. 3 is paired with 1 and with 4. So you can also determine if a relation is a function by looking at a graph. So let's go ahead and take our first example from the, first, from the other side. This was our first example. We already know that this is not a function because 1 and negative 3 are paired with two different ranges. It repeats itself. So what I want you to do is I want you to stop the video. I want you to graph these ordered pairs and then answer this question over here. So now you can determine if a graph is a function by just looking at it. So if you take a look at this, this question is, notice where the domain values of 1 and negative 3 fall. Well, if you look right here, here are my domain values of negative 3. And so if you look, these two are stacked on top of each other. And also, because 1 makes this not a function, they're stacked on top of each other. And so 
to determine if something is a function, what you're doing is you're trying to see, are there any two points that fall on the same vertical line? And so that's what I wrote here. The points fall on the same vertical line. So right here, this is not a function because these are stacked on top of each other. And so this is actually called the vertical line test. So read below what it says the vertical line test is. So if I'm going to just determine if a graph is a function or not, I'm going to use the vertical line test. And so basically, you're just imagining if I take the graph, so like for this one, the graph, we're looking at this V-shape here. If I were to draw vertical lines all the way through this entire graph, if I hit a point more than once, then it fails the vertical line test. So if you think, if I just go ahead and draw a bunch of vertical lines through this, I'm never hitting a point more than once, so this one is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So if it passes the vertical line test, then it's a function. However, the next one, if I do a bunch of vertical lines, well, oh, it fails the vertical line test here and here because I have two points on the same vertical line. So this one is not a function. So stop the video and do the vertical line test on these next three. All right, so if you look, this one right here, it is considered a function because I don't hit a point more than once on the same vertical line. This one's not a function because if I draw a vertical line through any part of this graph, if you notice right there, I hit a point in three different places on the same vertical line. Now this next one might be a little confusing. You have to understand what an open dot and a closed dot means. An open dot means that that point does not exist there but a closed dot means that point does exist there. So even though it looks like these are stacked, because that point right there is not actually a point, then you don't actually have a point there. So this passes the vertical line test, so this one is a function. All right, so now let's take a look at the last question. If you think about all the linear equations that we've been working with in this unit, what type of straight line is not a function? Well, if you think about it, we've graphed all these different lines. We have lines with positive slopes, with negative slopes, with zero slopes, and then we've got ones with undefined slopes. It's so it's the lines with the undefined slopes that are not functions. And so the equation of lines with undefined slopes are the equations that are in the form x equals a number, which are our vertical lines. Those are the only lines that are not functions. All right, that's all for today.